Welcome, everybody, to what I think is one of the most fascinating subjects of our day, how we get our packages, how we get them quickly, how we get them without accident, and how, frankly, how much technology goes into that is just amazing. With us, we have somebody who is the best person to speak about this. His name is Satyan Parameswaran, and he is uh, president of UPS Information Technology. Uh, you join after a, a lauded career in engineering. You were working in the biomedical sphere. You were working in the financial sphere. Now. Packages. Why? Uh, Lisa, good to be here. I'm an engineer at heart and by education. If you are an engineer, that means you are a problem solver. Problem solvers are good at uh, taking a complex problem and uh, breaking it down to simple parts so that you can solve it meaningfully and uh, more importantly, repeatedly. If you are that person, UPS is the place because UPS is an engineering company which happens to have a lot of packages and trucks to deliver packages around the world. So uh, the logistics business is uh, nothing but applying and making sure the right resources are available at the right time to pick up a package, move the package, and deliver the package. So on every single day, we solve the engineering problem of how to move 25 million packages across 220 countries efficiently and profitably and making customers smile. So it's a great place to be if you are an engineer. I think that probably some people may not think of UPS as an engineering company with incidental uh, trucks and planes and packages being delivered. And yet the way that you describe it is so fundamental to what you do every day and frankly what we all rely upon. What are the problems that you're solving at a time when we all want our packages and we want them now? So on a normal day, I said uh, we deliver uh, 25 million packages. These 25 million packages uh, typically get picked from 8 to 10 million locations across so many countries. We have give or take around 2,000 facilities around the world where we receive packages, we process the packages, and we sort them, and then we put them in the package cars uh, that can go out and deliver packages. If you look at it, uh, every one of those locations, we need to have the ability to plan how many packages are going to come in, how many packages are going to leave, how many people are needed, how many people are needed to sort the packages at 4 o'clock in the morning, how many drivers are needed, how many package cars are needed, and what time each of those packages need to be delivered because we are known for only one thing, delivering packages on time. So all these activities happening across 2,000 places, across 25 million packages on every single day needs a lot of processing. That amount of processing is practically not possible to be done just by humans. So we use extensive amount of state-of-the-art technology to help our planners and sorters and drivers do a better job so that we can deliver packages. So you became, uh, you rose to this position in 2019. Yeah. And this issue has been going on for a while. Amazon, uh, many of the other companies, the just-in-time delivery mm -hmm. has been very present. So how has the game shifted where artificial technology, artificial intelligence is so crucial? How has it done before? And how is it changing apart from just sort of replacing certain human deliberation? So let me take a step back. I said uh, we have around 2,000 facilities. Let me take one facility. Say, Lisa, you are the planner for the facility. So you have been doing that job for, say, 10 years, 20 years. So you know on a normal day, hey, uh, I am supposed to get 8,000 to 8,500 packages. I am supposed to put uh, maybe like uh, 45 drivers on the road. And you have this uh, tribal knowledge and the experience built into you. So you are making decisions based on your experience. Come pandemic, all the patterns you realized are no longer valid because the whole delivery pattern changed. Uh, we were no longer delivering to commercial locations because most of the organizations allowed their people to work from home. So our delivery pattern changed 
and we started carrying more packages. So Lisa, if you are a planner, how can I help Lisa to make better decisions? Say instead of 8,000 packages, all of a sudden you are going to process only 6,000. You don't want to have more people because if you have more people, you would tend to use them so the efficiency goes down. Or on a day, say, instead of 8,000 packages, you are supposed to handle 10,000 packages. You just cannot make up people. So the cost of poor quality planning was so, so important. Because, like I said, we are logistics. We need to know what resources should be available at what time so that we can deliver services. Like Lisa in that center, I have 2,000 Lisas. How do we use technology so that uh, I have a bird's eye view of the network. All the 2,000 places, 8 to 10 million customers giving their packages to UPS, and uh, we trying to deliver 25 million packages, some of them in the network. The bird's eye view, we take it, and we let Lisa know, Lisa, this is what you need to do. So when you say we, uh, talk a little bit about the actual programming, what mm -hmm. the inputs are, uh, what goes into it in order to give me what I need to know to figure mm -hmm. out how many drivers to book and uh, when to sort the packages. So uh, the V I mentioned is we built a platform, a proprietary data engineering platform at UPS. We love our acronyms. We call it HEAT. HEAT stands for Harmonized Enterprise Analytics Tool. It takes all the data. When I say all the data, say you log on to ups.com, you want to ship a package. That's the digital emission. Hey, Lisa wants to ship a package. Like that. Everybody wants to ship a package, we get the data. When I say I am trying to deliver 25 million packages, that's data. And the 25 million packages that didn't happen to come to the delivery point all of a sudden, they went through the network. So on any given day, I may carry 50 to 60 million packages in the network. Then another 25 million packages might be on their way. And we have industrial automation, we have trucks, we have planes, sorters. Every one of them are giving a digital signal at every single second. So we built this platform, taking customer intention to ship, our intention to deliver, our sortation automation, 27,000 transactions per second throughout the day we process. It's more than billion transactions per day we process to make it happen. A lot of people think about artificial intelligence as replacing human intelligence. And I know that you push back against that, where you say it's actually doing things that human beings cannot do, like process a billion different things uh, every day. How will this evolve in terms of the interplay as to the human component and uh, the technological back backup for how this will actually function? That's a great question. This platform is a centralized platform, but it is not a centralized decision-making platform. We still need 2,000 Lisas to plan because they are all over the world. They may have connectivity, they may not have connectivity. So this platform is an intelligent way to help Lisa to make better decisions with the higher quality of data. The moment Lisa knows what is coming in, they can make better decisions. Uh, eventually, uh, will uh, Lisa be replaced? Uh, we don't think so at this point because the act of logistics is influenced by so many factors. A local weather, a, 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 a water pipe breaking down, or a, a small dam breaking out, a power outage. So we will always have a need for the planner at the end point. But helping the planner with the better data quality and better decision-making tools is the way to go. You say that it's not going to replace me if mm -hmm. I'm the head of this, mm -hmm. uh, this processing center. So what is the evolution? The evolution is artificial intelligence augmented decision making because the cost of poor quality decision for a logistics company is huge. Say if you are looking for 10 people, if you end up using only six or if you are looking for 15, either way it's bad. Either we are going to spend too much money to deliver packages or we are going to deliver packages late. So we are trying to make better quality decision. So this platform's intent is how to help the planners to plan much better. Is the goal ultimately to save money, to be more profitable, uh, or to just be able to do more and faster, or all of the above? I mean, how much is this, what a lot of people would look at as a cost-saving measure? 
Uh, absolutely. Uh, we are a for-profit for corporation. That's no secret. Uh, every uh, massive project like this has to justify itself. So this heat platform, if I just uh, throw some numbers at a very high level, uh, we could have saved 100 million miles that need not be driven. There is a saying here at UPS, the greenest mile at UPS is the mile that's not driven. So if you say, I saved 100 million miles, to drive 100 million miles, I would have spent fuel, I would have spent human effort, I would have spent wear and tear on the vehicle, I would have spent capital to buy the package car. Mm -hmm. All those things are saving. So it's uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in savings and hundreds of millions of dollars in emissions that are avoided. If you translate those many hundreds of millions of miles that are not driven, you can translate it to several metric tons of emissions that are avoided. When you talk about artificial intelligence, I want to dig into the intelligence part, mm -hmm. especially as we're looking at a world globally mm -hmm. that is facing some unprecedented challenges, whether it's COVID, whether it's the war in Ukraine uh, that has left a lot of the supply chains disrupted. Mm -hmm. How do you plan around these exogenous events and whether, you know, there's a, a, a shipping plant where people are they're all getting COVID and then they're staying home, or if there's a war and, and people can't get to certain ports? So uh, once again, uh, I think you have the habit of asking great questions about logistics. Are you sure you never worked in logistics? <laughs> I am absolutely positive. And okay. I can tell you, anyone who knows me knows that I'm absolutely dreadful. Full respect for logistics, but you know, so, uh, leave it to you. <laughs> artificial intelligence and planning a network, they all need one thing in common. You need high quality data. So with respect to uh, uh, geopolitical uh, situations affecting a particular part of the world or uh, some weather incidents and knocking out a couple of states, say 27 inches of snow somewhere. When those things happen, uh, the platform we have built, it knows the available capacity and the available operatable capacity to us. I'll give an example. Um, there was a weather incident in uh, Texas a few months back our network was kind of stalled for more than 24 hours. That means uh, I cannot route those packages through Texas. We didn't stop delivering packages. Our platform knows, hey, these are all the places that are not available. So it intelligently routes the packages through other parts of the network so that the customer, you, Lisa, when you ship a package, say, from Houston to San Francisco, I'm not going to come and tell you just because there was significant amount of snow in New Mexico, your package is not getting delivered. We have the ability to recognize the bottlenecks and route the packages around the bottleneck so that the customer's packages are getting delivered. So those kind of macro effects are affecting micro centers. If you are, Lisa, working in the plant, you might not have that ability. So that's why we have the platform that keeps looking at the overall network and we have a digital twin of the network. And the digital twin will tell Hey, these sections of the network are not available, work around it. That's what we have done. So one thing that you've been talking about is we've come to rely on faster and more accurate delivery on a regular basis and how some of these engineering uh, and frankly the artificial intelligence that you use isn't simply uh, nice to have or smoothing over the edges, but it's very much a necessity. The only way that this gets done, at what point are we approaching our limits in terms of how quickly we can expect things to be delivered? So, uh, how quickly things get delivered uh, is going to be dependent on how many resources are available to be thrown at, at what price point. Because uh, all the logistics company, we make uh, efficiencies at a macro scale. Uh, if we go keep the going down the path of, uh, I want my package in three hours while your neighbor can wait for two days. Uh, it, it, it affects the macro efficiency. So uh, can uh, all these deliver me same day, deliver me in four hours are achievable? Definitely. But they will all operate like a network within the network. You can't make the worldwide network good enough to handle the end point, the same day delivery as well as good at it. So, our concept is network within the network, plug in the players, that's how it's going to be done. How does an artificial intelligence platform deal with the humanity of the classic understanding 
of what UPS delivery is. I mean, I think about, for example, during the holidays, uh, when my kids know that they're going to be getting packages and they get excited about it, or when we see the mailman at the, in the evening and we say hi to him. So artificial intelligence is uh, definitely not going to impact our uh, service provider driver interactions because they are our face of our company. Uh, one of the most friendliest operators are UPS drivers. Uh, that's not going to affect them. However, it's going to make them do their job much more efficiently because they also have their families. We will make sure that their day is planned out so that when they leave the center around 8.45 in the morning, they deliver all the packages and then they come back on time so that they can have their quality of life. So uh, artificial intelligence is going to make everybody's quality of life much better and also help us to deliver packages using the least amount of effort and cost so that we can make the shareholders happy. You've been at UPS for almost 20 years, yes. 19 years. A lot of changes in that time. A lot of changes. From everything from the technology that you're talking about to what we expect in terms of delivery and how people operate. What do you think will be some of the biggest advancements over the next 10 years in your space uh, that you think perhaps people are not counting on as much? So uh, I have seen a lot of changes uh, in the last 19 years, but if you look at UPS from a distance, we have been in business for 118 years. Uh, we have seen multiple world wars and uh, several like uh, geopolitical uh, destabilization efforts and a lot of economic uh, downturn. So we are good at adapting to what's coming. Uh, we are also very good at adapting technology. We were the first logistics company in the early 90s to start using 2D barcodes. We were the first ones to say, give me the package level detail customer so that I can plan my network. We started it. These concepts were just on academic papers. We started them. So we always try to push the envelope. Our network, we built it based on scanning. Say you put a package, uh, when it goes through our network, a human or an overhead camera scans the package. So the scanning is the part of our uh, network that helps us to know what is going on. We are starting a new journey to transform our company from scanning to sensing. What will happen? If the package has a smart tag, it will declare, hey, this is me. I am coming from here. I am going here. Help me to go there. So we want to transform our company from scanning operations to sensing operations. So with the, with the advent of RFIDs, with the advent of smart tags, we are going through the transformation of making the network a sensing network. You might have seen some glimpses of the sensing network in the last two years, our COVID vaccines. When we shipped them, we attached all those packages with a smart powered RFID tag, which was kind of declaring every single second, hey, this is where I am. Please don't lose me. This is where I want to go. Am I in the right place? So we have the transformation of from scanning to sensing. Once you are in the sensing world, the industrial automation that can help to move these packages at a much more efficient scale is tremendous. So I'm going to ask and finish up with an unfair question. So I apologize in advance. You're getting <laughs> nervous. I can feel it. Uh, uh, which is, you collect so much information through this whole process. Mm -hmm. There is such a bird's eye view on an entire world and frankly, the flows of, of objects. Are there any plans or could it be used for something that we haven't really discussed? As you say that it's an engineering company with incidental planes and trucks and packages. So with uh, lots of amounts of uh, data, uh, we collect uh, data about uh, your particular location, what are all the packages they have shipped, what are all the packages they have received. We also have a product called My Choice. Uh, you as an individual uh, customer can register for My Choice. So UPS will let you know when UPS is sending packages to you from anyone, he will let you know and we have My Choice for this. So we collect a lot of data that can be used. Where this is going to go is we will be able to create very customizable products that can suit Lisa or Bridget or Satyan or for particular segments. That's where it's going to go. With a lot of data with us, we have the responsibility to keep the data safe and not misuse it. So we, we play by all the compliance rules, but uh, 
the data will result in creating very innovative customer centric products of the future that's where it's going to go satyan thank you so much for taking the time this was fabulous thank you lisa